everybody and welcome to the well-educated artist today we have a canvas and as you can see this had a board painting on it and I decided to paint over it now gessoing over it is one way that you can get rid of a lot of the lines and if you can see here in the light there are lots of squiggly marks this usually happens when you use metallics mixed with other pore paints, you kind of get these flow lines. And even if you paint over it, this one's just painted over it, it's not just so that you can see it, you still have a lot of these marks. Now if you like that character that it adds, then that's great. But if you don't, what do you do when you have canvases that you've painted over and they don't look that great? Well, I got to thinking about this and decided to use this product. Now, this is not white paint. This is Liquitex Basics Acrylic, but it is modeling paste. So this actually allows you to add texture. Since you already have texture, why not add more texture to your work and to your pore painting? So using this, and if you've seen other videos where I have used these, these are stencils. I've used it maybe once in a video, but I have all these stencils lying around. So I decided you can do these freehand, you can make a really nice flower. I think I've seen people actually do that with modeling paste and pour paint over it, but we're going to use and make it very easy. We're gonna use a stencil. So I'm just gonna take this really cool three-day stencil and I can put that onto my canvas. You put it off center. Uh, you could put two side by side, whatever you want. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the center. To make it easier, just make sure that I am dead center. I want to be about four inches from each side. I'm just making sure that I am. Okay, so just about center. Then I'm just going to take some tape, keep it in place on the corners. not taped down very well. Let's move it to move it around a little bit. Okay. So now you have your stencil and you can build this up in layers. I'm just going to be putting some of this onto my canvas over my stencil. This does not smell very pleasant, but it'll get the job done. I'm going to go over it using a palette knife so that I get a 3D effect. Okay, so once you've got your modeling paste on, we now need to remove the stencil because we don't want that to stay on our stencil if we ever want to use our stencil again uh, because it will dry hard and it will dry raised. So just going to remove the tape so that I can pick it up. And let's see what we have. Cool. And there's going to be our design. If you have any that's outside, you want to go ahead and clean that up. You can, if you've got any that's escaped, you can clean it up with a brush and water. You can go back with your palette knife and if there's something you don't like, you can take it out. You can see that I'm leaving a lot of the texture in there. I just quickly put this on there and I just thought that would be interesting for it to have lots of texture. I find this a little strange right here, but we're going to go for it. So we're going to have to let this dry. And once it's dried for 24 hours, we can build it up. We can do this again if we want to and make it bigger. We can add to it, but right now I'm just going to let it dry. Okay, it's been 24 hours later and we have got our modeling paste. If you remember our Liquitex Basics acrylic modeling paste, we have let it dry and it's nice and hard. It has a lot of texture. Now you could sand this down, but I'm gonna allow it its texture. You could have also been really, really neat so that it would be flat, but this one has so much texture and we're just going to go for it. 
Now, we're going to have a couple of different sets of colors. The first two colors I'm going to be putting in my cup is going to be violet and lime green. Basically purple and lime green, but they call that color violet. And there's going to be in the second cup primary yellow and viridian blue, which is a really light blue green or turquoise color, but it's a light turquoise. So those are the two colors we're going to use. We're also going to be using our DecoArt 24 karat gold, which I've got to be using in so many things these days. But I'm not sure how I'm going to want this to play out. And this is kind of fun house colors, I guess. And I thought about doing this monochromatic, but I couldn't decide what I wanted to do. This is kind of like the cursed canvas. You know, it's the one that I painted over. It's the one that's got all of the crazing and the um, raised places in it and texture. So that's why we put one ahead of the texture over the top of it. So who knows how it's going to turn out. I've never done this before, but let's check it out. Now, a technique I do like to use, I've got two cups here, and I'm going to go ahead and I am going to be pouring two different colors in this. So I'm going to take the lids off. And I like to pour them together so that they're side by side. If you've seen me do this before, I have done this and I have a compilation video where I do this, where I can get kind of a half and half quantity, kind of a yin and a yang, but with fun colors in it. Maybe just a tiny bit more. So let's go ahead and do that. And actually I put colors over here. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing in the other cup. I'm going to do that with our Viridian and our Yellow. They always want to come out at two different times, but I try to keep them about even. And that's probably about good. Okay. Put these back. Okay. For fun, I am just going to go ahead and I'm going to put some gold on the top. I'm just going to twirl some in there just like this on the top of each one. Now this is going to be a kiss pour pretty much. So we're going to have one side that is the lime green and the violet and one that's the yellow and the viridian blue. So I'm just going to kiss those and we're going to see how this goes because I'm not sure how the paint's going to react over the top this much paint. Sometimes it tends to have an interesting reaction with whatever's underneath. So, just gonna go ahead and pour. Right over the top, yay, you can see the beautiful gold. I love the shimmer of the gold. Okay, let's remove those. I'm going to move my paint back out of the way. Knowing that this could get messy, I'm going to go ahead and have a lot of bubbles because I did make this paint right beforehand. I was running low. So I'm just going to pop some of those bubbles up front with my torch. And I'm going to keep that from going over the side. I'm going to cover my design completely. A lot of bubbles. Once we've charged it, we're going to begin our tilt. Tilt to one corner. Going to tilt all the way back to the other corner. And we're going to tilt forward. And I'm going to tilt all the way back. Hopefully we haven't lost all of our beautiful purple. It's going to come in. Okay. Now, I can see my design in the middle. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a good torch again. Get out all of my bubbles. 
so we are going to do something with the middle once this is dried we will have some contrast in the middle but right now we just need to wait for it to dry and then when we're going to come back and we're going to do what we need to do to the middle okay so our painting is completely dry now there is a lot of cracking it's like it's had a crackle finish and a lot of times that happens when you have painted underneath so even i've noticed even with gesso with poor paintings because the painting is so thick you often get the cracking and that's probably because it's probably not completely dry underneath but i think it's kind of neat you get a lot of cool texture and this painting is all about texture and as you can see you can see our relief where we did our stencil with our modeling paste and we need to bring that out because we don't have the color. So we can go with crazy colors or we can go with something like deco art, the uh, extreme sheen, which is so much fun, I always have. And it already has a little bit of that glitter from the deco art, so we can kind of go over the embossing and give it a little bit of shine, or we can add straight colors. There's a lot of fun things that you can do with this. So what I'm going to do is try just with the gold an extreme sheen, I have to say, likes to separate, so you will have to give it a pretty good shake if you're using it and get it to come back together because it separates out. And it will separate out from your pour painting. When you've got it ready for pour paintings like this, you can see how it's separated out. It does this pretty much every day just because of the stuff that's actually in it and suspends the particles. So you need to give it a good shake with your regular paint as well. check on that and see okay it's shaking up pretty well I'm just going to dip my brush into it and I'm going to try to go over just the raised parts and see what happens now extreme sheen is still pretty translucent so that may not be the way we want to go we may want to put something else down but I'm just going to try this up front and see how that's going to look, if it's going to be enough or not. Okay, so what I've decided to do is use both the Deco Art Extreme Sheen and Dazzling Metallics. Now the Dazzling Metallic is not as translucent, it's a lot thicker. So this is, you can see, where I put the Deco Art Extreme Sheen, and it's very pretty, but it's not giving me the coverage that I want. So what I'm gonna do is go over it with the Deco Art Metallic Gold. And I believe this color gold is Glorious Gold. So I'm going to use the Glorious Gold to do that. It may take several coats to put your gold down or your accent color, whatever you choose it to be. In my case, it's gold. And then what I'm gonna do is, you can see that there's a little bit of gold, but I'm going to highlight even more of it out here. So you're kind of maybe feeling like it has that outer space vibe. So I'm going to add a little bit more gold in. To pull it together. What I'm doing now is adding some gold to the end so that we look like our galaxy is breaking apart into space because that's the story I want to tell. That's the story I feel in this painting. So, let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to take my Deco Art 24 karat gold and I'm just going to kind of be thick on the edge and then kind of thin as I go out. And that may even mean using a little bit of the glorious gold. So it's going to look like it's breaking apart. 
it's leaking. I don't know what it is today, but I feel like that's the story that I want to tell, is that this is leaking out into space. to do a few finishing touches and I can show you what this looks like when it's done. Mm -hmm. 